an ancient race of people who were small in stature once lived on Earth, such as the dwarf gods of Mexico and Peru, the Minhyun of Hawaii, the Nanahi of the Cherokee, and the African Pygmies, all as evidence of one singular globe-spanning ancient race. The old ones who survived the Great Flood were in fact the original humans. Elves? Hobbits? A lost race of pre-humans? Or even aliens? This story begins in 2018, when the mysterious Middle East was still a text-to-speech bot investigating strange crimes and paranormal anomalies across the Gulf region. While researching for an episode for the existence of Quranic giants buried deep beneath Yemen and the UAE's empty quarter, completely by accident, evidence for the opposite was found online, in a remote Iranian village several thousand kilometers away. Evidence for a now lost race of miniature humans. Remnants of this hobbit-type species was unearthed during the 1940s. But bar a couple of YouTube videos and a sprinkling of news articles, there seems to be no interest in this discovery from the online global fringe community, so it was ignored. Flash forward to today, 2021, where I received a phone call from the mysterious Middle East asking if I wanted to not only cover this long extinct race of dwarf people in Iran, but also a living community of what can best be described as a supernatural race of hobbits in Morocco that no one has talked about beyond a couple of mentions in the footnotes of some obscure academic papers since the late 1800s. In this special episode, join me and my son Abdullah as we investigate whether these two anomalous communities of dwarfs are evidence of a pre-human civilization. The year was 1891, and the Canadian anthropologist Robert Grant Halliburton received a confirmation letter from Sir John Drummond Hay, the United Kingdom's envoy to Morocco, concerning the existence of a mysterious and seemingly anomalous race of miniature human beings. At that time, the International Congress of Orientalists, based in neighboring Algeria, were already extremely critical of Halliburton's claims that real dwarfs currently existed in Morocco. So in order to salvage his reputation, he embarked on a several year study into the existence of anomalous tribes of mutant humans in and around Western Sahara. Sir John Drummond Hay wrote to Halliburton, With regards to your queries on a race of dwarfs, differing from that of the Moors, Arabs, Berbers and Negroes, I found a man from Wad Dara who described a similar race of dwarfs dwelling at or near a town called Akka in Sous Massa. He described them as being about four feet high with a red skin color and short woolly hair. He further wrote, These small people, known as the little Harratin, are also called Baraka, or Ulad Mabruk, the blessed tribe, or sons of the blessed, since they are supposed to bring good luck. The residents of the area do not like to speak openly about them, because doing so could bring bad luck. With Drummond Hay's confirmation letter in hand, Halle Burton traveled to Morocco, where he assembled a large team primarily made up of locals to explore the country's inner regions. On his journey, he not only encountered locals who spoke to him directly of these people, but also European expats living there who claimed to have encountered odd-looking humans, confirming that this was not merely folklore, but reality. Much like the dwarfs or alien-type hobbits of Iran, whom we will discuss in the second half of this video, they were a fully thriving community with genetic features significantly different from regular humans. In his book, 
the dwarfs of Mount Atlas, Halliburton wrote that tribes of this race were normally around four feet tall, some of whom shave their faces and the front of their heads, have a reddish skin color, a negro phenotype in many instances, and most interestingly were the descendants of dwarfs, who had over several generations intermarried with both black tribes and brown or white Berber tribes. As for their origins, the name Dido Osiri appears several times in the research, an ancient elder god that is believed to be the West African equivalent of Egypt's Osiris. Some of these dwarfs, as well as other Saharan tribes, are believed to have worshipped this being, hinting that they believed he played a part in their creation as a cursed race of small people. But where are they today in the 21st century? There may be a few still around, but as an anthropologist, Halliburton in the 19th century noted that this race of dwarfs were already going through a process of natural eugenics due to their interbreeding with regular humans. Although never coming face to face with a purebred dwarf, he did meet several individuals who were pygmy-like in appearance, possessing both human and dwarf attributes. Some of these individuals themselves confirm that they were members and descendants of tribes composed entirely of humans, who were typically less than four feet tall with red skin. It would appear that decade after decade, tribes matching their anomalous physical attributes have become less apparent due to their intermarrying with regular sized humans, with each generation of little Harratin becoming more human-like. With this in mind, we can assume that by today in the 21st century, their descendants will now be completely indistinguishable from your typical North African. In addition to these dwarfs, other anomalous human-type communities are believed to exist within the Maghreb region, spanning from Mauritania to Libya. In his research, Halliburton also speaks of another race of people to the south of Morocco who are known as Beni Kirbu, monstrous humans with dogs' heads, and another tribe composed entirely of cyclopses, people who only possess one eye. How much of this is overly fantastical folklore and how much is true is debatable. But the Greek historian Herodotus also wrote on the existence of similar creatures in Libya, stating, for the eastern side of Libya, where the wanderers dwell, is low and sandy, as far as the river Triton, but westward to that, the land of the husbandmen is very hilly and abounds with forests and wild beasts. Here too are the dog-faced creatures and the creatures without heads whom the Libyans declare to have their eyes in their breasts. Unfortunately, in the intervening years between then and now, neither anthropologists nor cryptozoologists have cared enough to follow up on Halliburton's research. When he initially made the claims of a mutant dwarf race in Morocco, the scientific community laughed at him, implying this is all a work of fiction or that his research just lacks scientific merit, leaving us with many questions like who exactly were these people and the purebred dwarfs they descended from? Were they merely a previously unencountered tribe of pygmies or were they actual dwarfs with a supernatural origin? And could evidence of their existence be found anywhere else in the MENA region or world? To answer this, let me introduce my son, Aboud. There is a village in Makhunik, Iran, where most of its residents are dwarf-like. All the people here have inherited a neurological condition called microcephaly, which simply means they are all genetically short. For them, this condition goes back thousands of generations. Folklore links them both to Arata civilization, from Sumerian mythology and Chahre Kotaliha, which in English means the city of dwarfs, a location discovered by archaeologists in the last century. A group of archaeologists who visited the area believe that at its oldest, the city age dates back to prehistoric times. Here, they discovered workshops, streets, and cemeteries. Over 800 ancient graves were excavated, all showing evidence of miniature people within the city. The house's walls, ceilings, and shelves all seem to be made for little people, 
and all the equipment discovered could only be used by dwarfs. Furthermore, across Iran, the skeletons of what appears to be dwarfs have been found, with many people connecting the discoveries with the dwarf city of Shahre Kotliha. However, anthropologists from the Cultural Heritage and Tourism Organization of Iran said that anthropological studies revealed that some of these bodies could merely be that of premature babies that had been mummified through natural processes. This may be the case in some instances, but is it for all? In August 2005, the discovery of a dwarf's mummified remains being put up for sale on the black market hit the region's news headlines. With a height of 25 centimeters and a body that looks more alien than human, two smugglers were reportedly arrested after trying to sell it for 80 billion riyals in a sting operation. Even though Iran's Kerman Cultural Heritage Authority admitted that the mummy belonged to that of a deformed 17-year-old human. This body, along with all the other anomalous instances of miniature human bodies found across Iran, suggests that something uniquely supernatural played an important role in the country's past. Looking at the broader picture, beyond the confines of the MENA region, Similar discoveries of Hobbit-type people have been found in a variety of diverse locations over the past 200 years, from Indonesia and Sub-Saharan Africa to North America. According to Dr. Susan Martinez, author of the history of the little people, an ancient race of people who were small in stature once lived on earth. She refers to legends and stories from many cultures, such as the dwarf gods of Mexico and Peru, the Minhyun of Hawaii, the Nanahi of the Cherokee, and the African Pygmies, all as evidence of one singular globe-spanning ancient race. Martinez goes on to say that this entire lost race whom she refers to as the first people, the old ones, who survived the great flood were in fact the original humans. Although this is quite obviously an extremely fringe position to take, Islamic texts from the Quran to the Hadith refer to a pre-human civilization on the planet. Some scholars hypothesize could may well have been as technologically advanced as us today. What the biology of these pre-human civilization was, is anyone's guess. Many theorists have been quick to suggest that this race may have been like the jinn, an invisible human-like species made of fire or plasma, that still live amongst us today, or some other anomalous species that have since been wiped out, such as the human monopods known as the Nisnas from Yemeni folklore, which were covered in an earlier episode. The academic Roy Velozny mentioned that the Nisnas, as a pre-human species, were once the dominant species on Earth. He states a theory that the world is only 50,000 years old and its history can be divided into five separate cycles of 10,000 years each. Roy writes that during the fourth cycle, God created the Jinn and the Nisnas. This is strictly a fringe belief, distant from mainstream Islam found in the Alawiya sect. Here, they state that before the creation of humans, other human-like species, such as the Jinn, another race of elemental creatures known as the Hen, and other strange creatures resembling humans, like the Nisnas, existed. According to Ibn Kathir, one of Islam's most well-regarded scholars and historians from the medieval age, the Hen belongs together with the Jinn as those creatures who shed blood on earth before humankind, causing the angels to question God's command to place Adam as the new ruler of this earth. Despite all the documented evidence, both archaeological and based on regional folklore, that intelligent flesh and blood beings that were not human once shared this earth with us, or even predated our time on this planet, the debate still ranges as to who or what these people were, and if they even exist. Even for us, 
The stories of rogue dwarf tribes in Africa's Maghreb region almost reads as a fictional piece of colonial era entertainment due to its extraordinary claims it made in the 19th century and the lack of anthropological research done into the region since. However, such in-depth studies are inherently dangerous since they may force a rewriting of our understanding of human development. Hence, why Halliburton studies were initially criticized by the International Congress of Orientalists in 1891 and have been largely ignored today. But what do you think? Could this all be folklore or did a pre-human race of aliens, jinns and hobbits once rule the earth? Comment below, make sure you hit that subscribe button and consider supporting my friend the Mysterious Middle East's channel on Patreon for bonus content or just to help the channel grow. And while you're at it, come over to my dad's channel as well for a more grounded and lighthearted take on regular Arab and Middle Eastern cultural issues. Next, the old man will be talking about Afro-Palestinians. Yeah, they apparently exist.